just export the PDF now. No export the PDF. Um, good afternoon and thank you for coming and today I'll talk about uh, well Zabbix obviously and we'll talk about maybe uh, some past of, of Zabbix and um, uh, what what we are working right now and maybe the future of Zabbix but uh, before I start let me introduce myself my name is Alexey Vladyshev I am a architect and product manager also author of Zabbix I'm working on Zabbix since 1997 or 1998 uh, and uh, so currently, uh, well I'm technical man so I'm doing lots of technical decisions, currently actually responsible for the architecture and the full roadmap of, of Zabbix. So again my talk today will be about the kind of the, the historical view on Zabbix first. We, we will have a look at the past to see what kind of a technical decisions were made in the past and then I will, talk, I will tell you more about the coming features of Zabbix 3.0 and also some things that I would like to improve in Zabbix uh, later, later on. Uh, so b b because I often go to the conference you may get the impression that I'm the only one who is working on Zabbix. Yeah? But it's, it's not true, absolutely. So we have a team of people, we have a 30 people uh, working in uh, three offices. We have one office in Riga, in Latvia, Lithuania, Europe. Uh, we have one office, we have an office in Tokyo and also the, the new office in New York. So most of our developers are located, located in, in, in Riga. And actually some people asking me, we are, you're doing free software this is a software free, you go to our website, you download our software and use absolutely for free. 
So how do how do you survive? Yeah. So uh, we we provide the services. We provide different types of services. Uh, actually, we f we follow in this respect very much a red hat model, the business model, and uh, I I really happy that we have a very active Zabbix community, well, in many different countries, including, including Brazil. So thank you, thank you very much for this. Um, so what do we do? We develop uh, a monitoring system, uh, Zabbix, which is a free, uh, and well, free open source, uh, again, uh, and uh, why, why it's important to have a kind of a free software is because this is, if the software is free, you may analyze the source code. You may be absolutely 100% sure uh, that what the software vendor advertises, exactly that what software is doing. Yeah, so this is really, really important. And actually, Zabbix is not limited only to monitoring of IT services like uh, servers, networks, and applications. It also could be used for, for other purposes, for example, for environmental monitoring, for monitoring of the temperature, humidity, for monitoring data gathered from sensors, or maybe from, for Internet of Things applications. And also, we are quite really fanatical about the quality of, of, of the product. Uh, I will talk about quality a little bit later. We have uh, some issues in, in, in this respect, but still we are always thinking how to improve the quality of, of Zabbix, and also we are thinking how to make Zabbix easier to use for our users. Yeah, Easier to upgrade, easier to maybe, well, just to, to maintain on, on a daily basis. So this is really, really important for us. Uh, let's have a look at the past. So it all started maybe 1997 or 1998, and at that point of time, I made uh, just uh, a number of a number of decisions, and some of decisions were related to the choice of development tools of languages. So actually, I selected the C language for all critical development, for development of the server, Zabbix server, Zabbix proxy, and Zabbix agent. It's all written in C language. Uh, then I selected PHP uh, as a language for web front-end development. Uh, and also, uh, I decided to use uh, relational SQL databases for storage of historical data and also for the storage of uh, configuration data. So if we have a look at the C language, so what is a C language? C language, if you, if, if you have developers in this room, so C language is a very low, lang uh, low level language. For example, Linux kernel is, is being developed in a C language. So you can write uh, very efficient code. Uh, you can write code which would consume uh, absolute minimum of CPU resources and memory resources. And actually C, language to some extent it delivers the Java promise, the promise of the Java language. You write code once and you run it everywhere basically. So you, you have, you have uh, C code, you may compile it on one platform, on another platform, on another platform. If you write in, in a good way, it, it, it is possible. So actually we use exactly the same code base for uh, Linux, uh, I don't know, BSD, HPX, AX, Solaris, uh, as well as Windows, yeah? Uh, and of course, due to the fact that the C language is very low level, uh, of course we have some issues, and one issue is that it, it, its development is slower. Of course, we don't have so much, so good level of abstraction in the C language, that's why uh, it takes some time to develop some, some, some features. And also, we may face some potential problems with the memory management related things like uh, some pointers, uh, um, what else, locks, and, and these things related uh, to memory management and to, to, to IPC communications, for example. The PHP language uh, is absolutely different. It's kind of a different universe. The PHP is interpreted language. It's really easy to start writing PHP code. Um, and also, what I personally, PHP is a perfect language. Uh, don't get me wrong. But what I personally don't like about PHP, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's dynamic typing. And because of the nature, because of its dynamic typing, uh, you may compare or 
I don't know, integers to strings, strings to integers, with objects, arrays, it's this, it's, it, it's not, uh, well, it's not so good. So some level of discipline is required to write a good PHP code, and because of the fact that it's interpreted language, some problems appear during runtime. You do lots of testing, you think that your application works fine, but at the runtime you get some, 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 some issues. And they scale backend. So you may run Zabbix uh, with a number of backends. We support MySQL, we support Postgres, we support uh, Oracle DB2 and SQLite. Uh, and they scale, uh, the, the relational databases have very nice set of features. First of all, they, uh, they guarantee they have, the, they, they have transactions. Transactions are really, really important, and transactions really uh, they, they contribute to data integrity very much. And also the data integrity rules which are built into, into, into the storage engine itself. And as a result of this, all information which we keep in the Zabbix database is, is consistent. This is, th that's very, very nice. But of course with SQL languages we may have some uh, issues. The one issue is the scalability. We may scale SQL engine to deliver maybe 50,000 of transactions per second. Uh, but if you'd like to scale up to 100 or 1 million of transactions per second, it's not easy anymore. It's not easy. So maybe it's, it, 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 you can scale for read operations, but you cannot scale for write operations uh, using kind of normal uh, uh, SQL based database engines. Okay? And if you if you have a look at the size of the binaries of Zabbix, I think you will be surprised. Because, for example, uh, I don't know, my laser, okay, it's here. So, uh, for example, the Zabbix server binary, the size of the s server binary is just uh, a little bit more than one megabyte. The size of the Zabbix agent is a little bit more than 300 kilobytes. And remember that Zabbix server is is the core of Zabbix. It has all business logic built in. It, it collects data, it sends notifications, it, it uh, detects problems, uh, it does absolutely everything, and it all fits uh, in a little bit uh, more than one megabyte of, of, of binary. And this is all thanks to use of C language. And we don't have much dependencies actually. So we, we, may, we may depend on MySQL library, maybe NetSNMP, some other few libraries, and that's it. Um, so, the architecture, what's good? I think that uh, the separation is lo of logic in Zabbix is quite good. So we have uh, quite well separated data collection, uh, problem detection, visualization, API. Uh, also, Zabbix is a multiprocessor processor application. So basically, you run Zabbix server and you can see that Zabbix server actually would fork a number of processes. Could be tens or maybe hundreds or maybe even thousands of processes depending on the size of your IT environment. So it basically scales quite well to the number of CPU cores you have. And also, thanks to selection of the SQL, this data and the history is always in a consistent state. Uh, and we also do a number of uh, optimization techniques on Zabbix server, Zabbix proxy site. The one is in-memory cache. So we are trying to keep information in memory just to uh, decrease number of queries for, to, to, to the database because these queries normally very heavy thing. Yeah? So we are trying to keep historical data in memory. We are trying to keep configuration data in memory and it contributes to performance very, very much. Uh, we also use another technique which is called kind of bulk operations or mass operations. So instead of generating uh, a number of insert statements which insert new information to history tables or updates or deletes, we are trying to combine them and then execute these hundreds or thousands of operations as one big operation and it works uh, in, in a much, much faster way. Uh, so, what, if, we, if we have a look and if compare the situation now with what we had more than 10 years ago, 
uh, what kind of changes we may see. First of all, if you have a look at the choice of languages, we still use a C language and we still use a PHP language. That's fine. Uh, as for development procedure, as the way how we develop Zabbix, we actually made a very, very long way. Now we have a very, very strict development procedure. All development is starting with a specification, and all specifications are available to our community. So you may go to zabbix.org website, and you could see specifications Kind of, kind of more or less formal specifications, the technical documents for all new features we are developing or, or will we'll develop uh, in the future. Okay, so this is very nice. And so we start with the specifications, then goes development, then goes code review, always, yeah, independent code review, independent testing, documentation, and only when we have documentation, code review, and tests ready, we, we, we tell, okay, this feature is ready. It's, it's ready to be uh, committed to, 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 to trunk, yeah? So this becomes part, part of Zabbix. Of course, we have uh, uh, well-defined coding guidelines. Again, coding guidelines available on our uh, web page. Just, again, go to zabbix.org or search uh, Zabbix uh, guidelines, and you can find guidelines for both C language and, and, and the PHP language. So these, these guidelines are very well-defined, and if you'd like to submit a patch to Zabbix, you, you have to follow guidelines. Uh, we use a continuous integration platform and we extensively uh, use uh, different static analyzers, especially to analyze a C code. So we'd like to catch any problems as soon as possible. So and the, what, kind, what, 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 what are the challenges we have now? And we have a few of them. First of all, because we use a different stack of technologies, we use a C code on the Zabbix server side for, for agent and proxy development, and we use a PHP, which is completely different. Uh, for the front-end development, uh, we face some issues. One is that basically in a team of Zabbix, we have uh, two sub-teams. One knows C very well, uh, and uh, another knows PHP very well, and we have a few people who, who knows both both PHP and C, and they know how to develop in front-end code and, and, and the back-end code. And this leads to a slower development, because uh, in order to develop a feature, a bigger feature requires changes on the back-end side and the front-end side, so we have to involve people from both worlds, from the C, C developers and the PHP developers, and I think because of this, um, there is, there is some, 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 some slow, slow down. And also, the, the PHP started in 1998, the development of the PHP front-end, so we have uh, quite a significant amount of historical PHP code. And, and this is uh, our current challenge. I think that C side, what we have on Zabbix server side, Zabbix proxy, and agent side, in a very, very good shape right now. Uh, and our challenge is to have the same the quality, to bring the same quality to the front-end side. Okay, and actually this, this is how, uh, this is how uh, code review looks like, I think, in, in our office. So this is a C code, code review, and the, maybe the PHP code review. We always have much more uh, issues with, with the PHP code, unfortunately. Okay. Present. So, what what uh, we are working uh, on right now? Uh, of course, uh, it is Zabbix 3.0. Zabbix 3.0 is the next major release. Uh, it it is long so so called LTS release. So it will be supported for five years. That's why we are very uh, careful about selection of features which we would like to put into 3.0. We'd like to make it as stable as possible. Um, and um, if you ask me a question, so what features are coming in Zabbix 3.0? Actually, the roadmap is available. It's publicly available. You may just go to our website, zabbix.org, or just find in the search engine Zabbix roadmap, and you'll be, I think you, you'll find this table very, very quickly. So basically, the table is a list of all features we plan for Zabbix 3.0. It also has a link to original issue, and it also has a link to a specification. So for, as I told you before, for each individual 
uh, uh, feature request, we have some details, and also we have uh, the specifications, the technical specification. So you may go and have a look how this particular feature will be implemented in a very, very uh, low level details. So the interface. Let's have a look how Zabbix interface looks like. In this is Zabbix 1.8 interface, okay? Zabbix 2.0, Zabbix 2.2. <laughs> Can you spot the difference? Zabbix 2.4. <laughs> okay, so to make things easier, everything in one screen. And actually, uh, in 2009, uh, actually, well, six years ago, or yeah, six years ago, uh, we made very little progress when it comes to the front end, to the interface. And it's really a shame, yeah? We put so much attention to server side. We put so much attention to proxy and the features of Zabbix agent. So actually, uh, we forgot about Zabbix front end, yeah? It, it, it's really a shame. So there is virtually no difference. Of course, we made some, uh, I, it, it's not like exact copy, yeah? but um, we, of course, we made some changes and improvements on Zabbix front end side for the last, well, six years. But in general, the layout of the front end, the uh, kind of underlying technologies were almost exactly the same. Yeah? So actually, it's time to fix it or it's time to start fixing it. In Zabbix 3.0, well, it's, uh, I don't know if you see or not, this is, uh, this is a current trunk, the latest development. If you don't see it, I have a brighter, <laughs> uh, a brighter uh, theme for you. So we will deliver it in a, in a dark one and a, and, a, and a white one. And actually, this is just the beginning. So we, we are constantly making uh, different improvements to the layout of the Zabbix front end. Actually, we'd like to make it as simple as possible. We'd like to display only relevant information on Zabbix front end. We'd like layout to be um, scalable to uh, different sizes of your monitors, of different screens. So it should work uh, nicely on, for example, retina displays. Um, so Zabbix, in Z, uh, well, the, the front end of Zabbix 3.0 will get, uh, I think, much cleaner and a better look. Uh, for example, this is the result of, uh, of the global search. So everything is, is for me, it's, it's, it's very nice, yeah? So for me, it's very clean, and it doesn't have any kind of uh, thing that distracts you from essential information, what, what you really need, to, really need to know. And actually, this is only visible part. So this is only visible part of changes we are making in Zabbix 3.0. Under the hood, there are much more changes. I told you before about historical code. And we have a big portion of historical code in, in, in Zabbix. Uh, and uh, now we are switching to, to MVC. We are doing a more modular uh, design for, 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 for Zabbix uh, PHP site. Now, I think we will try to introduce uh, ability to create your own pages. So you, if, you have some, if you have a coding skills, you may create your own page and integrate you and integrate this page into, into the global menu. Also, there will be ability to extend existing pages. So for example, if you miss some information in, I don't know, maybe in the list of hosts, you'd like to add a new column to the li uh, list of hosts. What you do is just Copy, uh, copy our code, you do some, um, well, no, extensions, you, you do some modifications, enhancements, uh, and then, okay, you'll get, you'll get what you really need without changing a core code of Zabbix. And in Zabbix 3.0, I am really looking forward to, to introduce kind of initial API or a plugin structure to extend a Zabbix, uh, well, to extend dashboard widgets so that users could create their own widgets. If you don't, uh, if, if something is missing in Zabbix, you'd like to have a, a special widget, maybe some graph or maybe information displayed in a kind of interesting, visually interesting way, okay, you have developers, you can do it, and you integrate it into, into Zabbix. Uh, another nice feature of Zabbix 3.0 is it's, it's, it's about encryption. 
Yeah? So encryption and authentication, it will be supported out of the box. It will be based on TLS version 2. Uh, and there will be support of both uh, certificate-based and the PSK-based encryption and authentication. And we have, and also from the very beginning, we decided to select, we, we decided to support three underlying libraries, OpenSSL, GNU TLS, or a Polar SSL. So you have a choice. If you don't trust for some reason, if you don't trust for some reason, I don't know, uh, OpenSSL, okay, go with GNU TLS. You don't trust GNU TLS, go with OpenSSL. You don't trust any of these two, okay, go with the Polar SSL. I think now security is kind of a hot topic and people are trying to get maybe more flexibility when it comes to security, so we decided from the very beginning support uh, three vendors, uh, three underlying libraries. So in order to upgrade from a non-secure setup to a secure setup, you need to follow three basic steps. First of all, what you, for example, and by the way, talking about the security, uh, talking about encryption and authentication, it will be um, supported uh, everywhere for all components of Zabbix, for communication between agent and Zabbix proxy, agent and server, server and proxy, and so on. So it, it, it is everywhere. Now, in order to enable uh, security, what you need to do, first you tell, for example, between Zabbix server and Zabbix proxy, you tell Zabbix server to accept both encrypted TLS and non-encrypted uh, connections from Zabbix uh, proxy. Then you configure uh, Zabbix proxy uh, and Zabbix server to use certificates or PSK or pre-shared keys. Okay, so now uh, Zabbix server will start uh, accepting both encrypted traffic and non-encrypted traffic from Zabbix proxy. Then you verify that everything is fine, encrypted traffic is accepted by Zabbix server, and you tell Zabbix server, okay, I'm not going to accept uh, non-encrypted plain text uh, traffic anymore. So this way, you may gradually upgrade from a non-secure setup to a secure setup. First one proxy, then another proxy, another, another, then all your agents if you need a, a better security for uh, for uh, your agents. Um, what else? Uh, the personal resources. In Zabbix 3.0, uh, we will implement so-called personal resources, so any user of Zabbix front-end could create uh, screens, uh, maps, and a slideshows, kind of a personal for, for his personal use, visible only to one user, to himself. And also there will be ability to share those resources with other, uh, other users or uh, user groups. So that's what is coming in Zabbix 3.0. And this is kind of big feature for us. We haven't started development yet. We even don't have a specification for this feature yet. And actually this is a big feature which actually um, kind of um, um, affects uh, the plans with the release of Zabbix uh, 3.0. Uh, what else? In, uh, in Zabbix 3.0, uh, there will be a versioning for XML files. And why, why it is important? Because uh, if we have a version of XML file, for example, if we know that this XML file was produced by, and what is XML files, by the way? XML files are used for import-export. So you may, for example, export a uh, template from Zabbix, and import this template on another uh, uh, on another Zabbix deployment, for example, or share this template with other users. Okay, and if you don't have a, a version of the XML template, you don't know what structure is uh, is expected, because one version of Zabbix may produce one set of fields in, in other version of Zabbix, there will be a, a different set of fields. So now we introduce a versioning. And now we know exactly uh, the rules for validation. We know exactly what structure is expected. Okay, and also we will maintain, of course, the backward compatibility. So if you have uh, XML files 
from Zabbix 2.0 or Zabbix 2.2 or Zabbix 2.4, they will be absolutely fine. Uh, they will work absolutely fine with Zabbix 3.0. So they will be automatically converted to one version and then automatically converted to XML, XML 3.0. Um, we also introduce so-called context-specific macros. This is kind of a special type of user macros we already have, but with a small addition of the context. So instead of having a macro like a minimum free di minimum disk space, uh, we add uh, so-called the context, like min disk space TMP. So for TMP file system, we expect free minimum free disk space 50%. Uh, minimum free disk space for DB file system is 30%, and the minimum disk space for all other file system, it will be a 10%, okay? So how it would work? It, wor it would work also very nice with low-level discovery macros. So for example, if we discover the file system slash home, okay, and we may use this macro as a threshold, so mean disk space home, and then Zabbix will try to find the value for min disk space home. It will scan uh, the list of all user macros we have. Okay, it's TMP. No, it's not TMP. It's not a slash DB. Uh, and it, fall, it falls back to min disk space, with, which is 10%. Maybe it's a little bit kind of difficult to understand right now what kind of advantages it may bring, but it, it really brings lots of advantages when it comes to uh, automation, uh, when it comes to a kind of a new level uh, of uh, flexibility for low-level low discovery we, we already have. Um, in Zabbix 3.0, we also introduce so-called ready-for-business checks. Why I call them ready-for-business? So suppose you you're a bank uh, and you have uh, multiple branches uh, around the country, you know that the bank branch opens at, for example, at 8, 8 a.m. And before 8 a.m., you'd like to know for sure that your infrastructure is working fine, that ATM, well, okay, ATM should work 24-7 anyway, but or, all workstations are working fine, all equipment you rely on like maybe printers and the level of uh, toners in your printers and all other equipment I is okay. So if your branch opens at 8, you'd like to verify maybe at 7.45 that everything is up and running and it's ready for normal daily operations, okay? So what we introduce in Zabbix, in Zabbix now it's possible to, now it's possible to tell Zabbix, please execute this check at a specific time. Okay, so you tell Zabbix, please execute this check starting from nine every two hours. And Zabbix will do this check at exactly this time, at nine, at 11, at 1 p.m., uh, 3 p.m., uh, and so on. And we have a very nice level of flexibility here. For example, okay, you may tell Zabbix, execute this check at working days only at nine, at 9 a.m. or at first day of every month at 9.30. At first day of every month at 9.30 if it's Monday. So we really introduced a very great level of flexibility when it comes to this new uh, kind of as a scheduling for, for, for Zabbix. Um, in Zabbix 3.0, we also introduce uh, the manual execution of a housekeeper. And let me remind you, so what is a housekeeper? Housekeeper is a process which removes older information from historical tables. If you configure Zabbix to keep history for, say, one month and the trans data for, well, one year, so Zab the housekeeper is a process which would remove older information you don't, you don't need anymore. Um, and sometimes you want to remove this information maybe at night time when it, it won't, maybe it won't affect uh, the, your daily monitoring very much. Okay, now you may tell Zabbix there is a new command line parameter accepted by Zabbix server which is called housekeeper execute and this is minus R. It stands for uh, runtime control. Okay, you execute Zabbix server housekeeper execute 
and the housekeeper process will be will be executed. And the combination with the cron tab, you may you may the schedule execution of the housekeeper anytime you want. What else? Uh, we introduce also a low level discovery which will be based on the result of the SQL statement executed with uh, with some external database. So if you have some, I don't know, Oracle database, Microsoft SQL database, and you retrieve data from that database by executing any SQL statement you want, like select maybe list of table spaces from, uh, from your external database, and then you use this information with low-level discovery to create items, triggers, graphs, and so on. You get list of table spaces. You'd like to monitor all these table spaces. You can do it right. You can do it now. So again, this is very nice um, addition to to existing low-level uh, discovery. What else? Also, there are many many features. Uh, by the way, the first one is quite important. This is support of dependencies for trigger prototypes. I think this is one of the most requested and the most mo most voted. Uh, feature in our uh, feature request tracker. Yeah. Uh, what else? Maybe use the support of IPv6 for Java Gateway. Actually, uh, Zabbix supported IPv6, fully supported. I think we introduced support of IPv6 maybe uh, six years ago or maybe five years ago. And the Java Gateway was the only process we didn't support IPv6. Now it supports. So now we 100% all Zabbix components 100% support IPv6. So you can use Zabbix in IPv6 only environment uh, uh, with, with with the Java Gateway. And some other changes: uh, new filtering for trigger stop 100. Uh, what else? Um, uh, yeah. So another feature is. Again, related to low-level discovery, now you could uh, retrieve information from different SNMP tables uh, using one uh, discovery rule. Okay, please have a look at uh, our documentation. It's all uh, described there in, 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 in a good uh, level of details. Um, okay, so you may ask when Zabbix 3.0 will be released. Um, well, yeah, it's a good question. I'd like to know as well. It, it, it was planned initially in May this year. Uh, of course, since I'm here, I'm talking about Zabbix 3.0. Zabbix 3.0 is not released yet. Uh, and uh, I would expect that maybe, maybe we'll manage to release Zabbix 3.0 in September this year. Okay, we still have uh, some things to, to develop. We ha still have some things to, uh, to, 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 to finish. Uh, and the future. Let me share some thoughts and ideas about where Zabbix development uh, is coming and what, what features I'd like to see and what improvements I'd like to see in the future, in, in future releases of Zabbix. First of all, the, the web interface. I think it will be our primary focus for the next Zabbix 3.2 and Zabbix 3.4. We really need to put much more effort to make uh, our front end uh, more interesting, more kind of um, more user friendly. So. I am not happy about the current navigation. So when you have the menu, if you okay, if you're a user of Zabbix, you know there is a menu. You you are navigating through the menu. There are too many clicks. You go from a configuration to monitoring. You click, then click again, then you select host. You select host group. It's not efficient anymore. Yeah. So it's absolutely not efficient. And one user from Zabbix conference, Lucas, he told he he actually. Uh, describe his experience like click till death. Yeah, so clicking, clicking, clicking is just maybe too much clicking for some people. And also, information in Zabbix front end is not very well interconnected. So you have information about host, but there is no easy way to go directly to a graphs of that host, or maybe to to see some uh, IT services related to this host. 
information is, is kind of a very, very disconnected. And also the drop downs, this is a control you know when you select a group of hosts and when you select a host from the list of hosts. Uh, it's, it's, not, it, it's absolutely not efficient when you have a large number of hosts or network devices. Say you have more than 1,000 or maybe 10,000 of devices, it, this control doesn't scale, absolutely not. Yeah, so it consumes too much memory, it consumes too much uh, CPU resources just for rendering. Yeah, it, so it's not, it's not good. Okay, so how, how to make it better? I think, of course, we have to think all the time about uh, a user experience, how to make our interface uh, better, better for users. So it will be easier for users to navigate, easier for users to get information out of out of Zabbix front end. And I think we should move more to kind of object oriented navigation when you select object, for example, a host or a host group, and all information about the host or a host group or item is one click away. So you, you, select, uh, you select item, you see immediately, I don't know, for example, um, all, all the graphs related to this item for different periods of time, maybe some triggers associated with this item, maybe events generated by triggers associated with this item, and so on. So it should be kind of, uh, you select some object and you see, you, see every, uh, you see everything about this object, including configuration, okay? You have some host, you click on the host, you can see information, and also you may configure, you may do some configuration changes. Um, and the performance. Performance of the Zabbix front end is, is okay, uh, but it depends, of course, how big is your environment. So for environments having 5,000, 10,000, uh, maybe 20, 30,000 of hosts, performance is, uh, is not acceptable to me. So we need to, we need to make much uh, better uh, with the development work to improve performance, and performance of, of Zabbix front-end depends on performance of the API, of course. And talking about the API, API can be very slow. If you ever tried to link one template to thousands of hosts, it, it, it just takes forever. It takes forever. So we, we, have, to, we have to do a, a better job of uh, making API much, much faster. It just generates too much queries to the database. We don't have very strong validation for Zabbix API, and we have quite poor uh, error reporting. You make API call, it fails for some reason, but it doesn't provide you details back why it failed. Okay, so for some, for developers, it's really hard to find a reason why my API call, which looks like a, a nice one, doesn't work. So what really needs to be improved? I'd like to make it much, much faster. I think the reporting in Zabbix is, is quite poor, yeah? We have so much data in Zabbix database about everything. 
historical data, trends, events, notifications, all the, all the information we have, but we are unable to present this information in, in a good way, yeah? And again, it's, it's absolutely not good. We need to think how to, how to present information to users, maybe in a graphical form, maybe in a form so that users would understand the correlation between the different events. We don't, we don't do it currently. And it's, it's about real-time information, and also it's about um, uh, analysis, uh, long, longer-term analysis, maybe predictions, uh, and, and, and so on. So, and, and nowadays, there are so many tools exist regarding visualization. Uh, and really, it's a shame we don't, we don't use these tools. I, I think it it's really needs to be changed as soon as, soon as possible. Uh, the scalability. I already told you that, okay, we may scale Zabbix maybe uh, to collect, to, to execute up to maybe 40, thousands of checks per second, and it's possible, but I think this is a kind of current limit. And this limit comes from, from the underlying database engines we use. It's really, as, as I told you before, it's really hard to scale uh, kind of uh, traditional SQL-based engines for, for this type of performance. And actually, the current level of Zabbix performance is absolutely fine if you have maybe, well, 10,000 of hosts or maybe even 100 of thousands of hosts. We have, we have users using Zabbix with uh, 100 of thousands of hosts. But of course, it depends on, 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 on number of checks. So for a better level of scale, and uh, also another problem we have is that the good level of scalability requires some special techniques like a table partitioning. If you have, for example, uh, well, historical tables with, well, a few terabytes of history, uh, you just have to use a table partitioning to, to make your database run, uh, run faster. And it's not so easy to achieve high availability and redundancy, especially uh, redundancy in case of using the SQL database engines. So, I'd like to see that Zabbix would scale on the horizontal level. Okay, you put more servers, you get a better performance. Um, and I'd like to separate uh, historical data and the operations, so that even if you have a terabytes of data, it, it, it should not affect monitoring it in, in any way, okay? So you have some operational data, it could be even stored in the memory all the time, and you have some sort of data warehouse, database or history uh, with the terabytes of data, in, and it should not affect uh, the, the real time, uh, the, the operations of, of Zabbix server, of your monitoring system, because it is what, what, is, what is important. Um, yeah, and the performance of web, web, web interface, of the web interface, I would expect sub-second uh, response time. So this is, this is the goal, and we really need to go to this goal. API and plugins. So currently, you may extend Zabbix in a number of ways. For example, you may add your own checks to Zabbix agent. You may add your ch uh, new checks to Zabbix server. You may have uh, your plugins. Uh, to extend the functionality of Zabbix agent and Zabbix server, you may you may have your own notification methods and so on. But what you cannot do right now, you cannot introduce your own trigger functions, for example. Okay, so we have a limited we we have a, some set of functions which comes out of the box. But if you'd like to add a new function, you have to change Zabbix code. It's not good. Also, there is no way to do some pre- and post-processing of, uh, of incoming data. Even, even in a simple case, when you'd like to remove maybe the last character of the received data, you cannot do it. We do not provide the way for some plugin, for overall plugin structure, infrastructure. And the dashboard widgets, which, you, which is really important, especially if we talk about a visualization and the way how to present data in, in a better way to Zabbix users. Um, what else? And just a few few slides and a few useful links. 
First one is supportzabbix.com. If you go to supportzabbix.com, you will find two projects there. One is list of all uh, issues and bugs reported by Zabbix users. And another one is a tracker of all feature requests. So you can see the list of all feature requests. And what's important, you may vote on, on your favorite feature request. And actually, why it's important? Because this way you can influence development and, uh, and uh, well, decision making of, of Zabbix team. Because, for example, in Zabbix 2.4, we implemented four of top five most voted features. In Zabbix 3.0, we are going to implement again four of top five most voted features from Zabbix community. So please go, and if you think that this feature is really important for you, just vote for this feature. Another link, share.zabbix.com. We introduced it, uh, I think, two months ago. And this is a place where community, Zabbix users, uh, may share their templates, plugins, and all relevant information like a how-to's about Zabbix. So if you have a nice template to monitor, for example, some Cisco device or Juniper device, you'd like to share the template with other users, just go to, our, to, to, to the website and you may upload the, your template. And you also could find other templates which are contributed by, by other users. Okay, well, thank you, thank you very much. Please follow us on Zabbix uh, Twitter and please go to our booth. We have our booth and there are some nice uh, giveaways for you waiting. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, so please ask. Uh, feel free to ask in, uh, in English or Portuguese. I have a very nice translator with me. Okay, maybe we have time for one or two questions. But anyway, afterwards, if you have more questions, please go to our booth. I will be there and I will respond to all the questions. But I think. Ah, ah okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, I was about to ask you. Uh, you already talked about the scalability and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, what do you think about MongoDB and our couch base for Zabbix on, I don't know, on the 4.0 version or something? Well, I, I still need, I, I still need uh, I, well, I don't, I don't want to go into most kind of deep details, but I think the MongoDB is, is not a good choice for, for Zabbix time series data anyway. But of course, I have some sort of short list of different database, NoSQL no uh, database engines, which I like to test and see how they scale. Because in, in many cases, what we see on, on the kind of web pages and the technical uh, papers of a different database engine is not, what, is not the level of performance we really may get, yeah? But uh, of course, I'm aware of uh, the NoSQL database engines, and it's, I have already a short list of five uh, engines to, 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 to verify, to, to see how they work. Yeah. OK, sorry. I think we, we have no time anymore. Thank you. Thank you very much. And please come to our booth. I'll be there. Thank you.